Okay, so first of all, this is part three of how to make a map in Python using base map. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to add annotations to a base map. So the first thing I'm going to do is plot one simple annotation, which is going to be plt.annotate and then in brackets and in quotation marks, I'm going to put the words I want in my annotation. So in this case, it's going to be aircraft measurements. Then after the comma, I'm going to do M and open brackets. And then in here, I need two coordinates. The first is going to be the longitude and the second, the latitude coordinate. So I am going to make these minus 90 and 0. Then when I run this, you can see I now have a small annotation of aircraft measurements. I can, of course, change the way this looks. So I can increase the font size by going font size equals 20 and then run. And you can see now the font is a lot larger. I can change the font type by going font name equals and then in quotation marks Arial, for example, and run that. And now you can see it's changed the font. I can change the color of the font by going color equals red and run. And now you can see it's changed that to red. Now, if I wanted to split this so that aircraft and measurements were on separate lines, I could go up here and between the words do backslash N, which stands for new line, and then run that. And now you can see that those two words are on different lines. Now to centerize these words, I am going to do HA, which stands for horizontal alignment, equals, and then in quotation marks, center. And then VA, which stands for vertical alignment, and then quotation marks, center. Then when I run that, you can see that aircraft measurements is now centerized. Now I can also make one of these words bold if I want by doing dollar sign backslash backslash BF, which stands for bold face, then putting the word in curly brackets and then afterwards putting another dollar sign. Then when I run this, you can see the aircraft is now in bold. Now, if I wanted to make this into italics, I would have to do dollar sign backslash IT for italics, then put the word measurements into curly brackets and then another dollar sign afterwards. And then when I run this, you can see measurements is now in italics. Now I'm going to put this part onto a new line. And then the next thing I'm going to add in is an arrow. Now to make an arrow, I need to have two different coordinates. One is going to be where the text is, and then the second one is going to be where the arrow is pointing to. So to do this, I'm going to go back up here and do x, y, text equals, and then m brackets, and I'm going to put minus 90 and 0 again. And this will now become where the text is, so the text is going to stay in the same place. I'm then going to change this to 10 and 15, and this is going to become where the arrow is pointing to. Next, I need to tell it to make an arrow, and this is going to be arrow props, which stands for arrow properties, and then equals D-I-C-T, and then brackets. Then I can run this, and now you can see this is the default arrow that it produces. I can of course change the way this looks, so I can change the color of it to black and then run, and that's changed it to black. I can change the width of the line, I'll make that 20 and then run, 
and you can see that's made it really thick. I will change this back to five. Then I can also change the head width to 20. This will make the arrowhead wider. You can see it's made this part wider. And I can also change the head length and I can make that 20 as well. And you can see the arrowhead is now longer. I can also add in something called shrink, which is basically going to increase the gap between the arrow and the data point it's pointing to, and also the arrow and the words. So if I make this 0 0.3, for example, and run this, you can see that the arrow has now shrunk. If I change this to 0 0.1, I think that is usually a good value. So you can see now the arrow is slightly offset from the data. Now the next thing I'm going to make is a box going around the annotation. I do this by typing box with two Bs and then equals DICT again and open and close brackets and then run. And you can see this is the default box going to change the way this looks as well. So I can do FC, which stands for face color, is equal to white in quotation marks. And that's changed that to white. I can change the line around the edge by doing EC, which stands for edge color. And I'm going to make that green and then run. And you can see it's changed that to green. I can also make this green line thicker by doing line width equals 10 and then run that. And you can see now the line width is really large. If I change that back to one, I can also change the box style. So for example, if I change this to circle and then run, I now have a circle. If I search for matplotlib annotations and open up this page here, and if I scroll down, you can see here all of the different kind of box styles that I can have and the different shapes that they produce. So for example, I can change this to round and then run that. And this makes a rectangle with rounded corners. Now I can also add something called padding to this, which is basically the space between the edge of the word and the edge of the box. So if I make this 0 0.5 and then run it, you can see that the box has now become slightly larger. I'm going to change that to 0 0.1. And that is my first annotation. I'm now going to add in a second annotation to this map to show some other features. So plt dot annotate open brackets, then in quotation marks, I'm going to want the annotation, which in this case is going to be samples. Then after the comma, I'm going to do M equals, and then the first coordinate is going to be the longitude coordinate, which is going to be 90 degrees, and then the latitude coordinate, which is going to be 30 degrees. Then if I run that, you can see I have samples written down here. I am going to increase the font size for this to 20 to make that larger. I can also make this bold by doing weight equals 1000 and then running that. You can see it makes the text thicker. Now I'm going to change the font for this and another way of doing that is going font equals and then curly brackets and quotation marks and then font name and then a colon and then in quotation marks a, the font name so 
going to put Comic Sans, for example, MS. Then if I go back to here and I do star, star, and then font. Now if I run this, it changes the font to Comic Sans. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add in an arrow in here with arrow props equals D-I-C-T and brackets. And this time, instead of using the latitude and longitude coordinates to decide where I want my annotation to be, I am going to use something called axis fraction. So I'm going to type XY text equals, then in brackets, I'm going to put 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Then I'm going to put text coordinates are equals to, and in quotation marks, axes fraction. Then when I run this, you can see that samples is now in the top right hand corner. The way axes fraction works is basically that the x axis goes from zero here to one here. And then the y axis goes from 0 here to 1 here. So this point here would be 0, 0, and this point here would be 1, 1. So if I change these values here to 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 and run that, you can see the label ends up in the bottom corner. And if I change it to 0 0.8 and 0 0.8, it goes back into the top corner. Now I'm going to change the way the arrow looks and this time I'm going to use something called arrow styles. So in quotation marks I'm just going to put a dash and then when I run this you can see it makes a line but it doesn't have an arrow head for it. If I go back to this page here and keep scrolling down, you can see here all of the different kind of arrow styles that I can use and the different sorts of arrows that they produce. So for example, if I add in a greater than symbol here and run this, it makes an open arrow for me. I can also have something called a connection style. So for example, if I make this angle and then run, you can see that the arrow now has a right angle in it. If I go back to this page here and scroll up, you can see all of the different kinds of connection styles that are available and these sorts of arrows that they produce. So for example, if I change this to angle three and run this, it will create a curved arrow. Now the next thing I'm going to add in is a box around the annotation, but I'm going to do this in a different way this time. I'm going to do box equals box props for box properties. Then up here, I'm going to write box properties is equal to, and then I am going to copy and paste all of this information here using control C and control V. Then I can delete all of this here and I can make this equal to box properties as well. And so now when it's deciding what kind of box to make, it's going to look at this information here. Then when I run this, you can see it's now made both of these boxes the same. This is useful if you have a lot of annotations, so you don't have to type all of this out or copy and paste it every single time. And this will also work for arrow properties. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to put an annotation outside of the map instead of on top of the map. And you can do this using the axis fraction feature. 
So if the x-axis goes from 0 here to 1 here, in order to get the annotation outside the map, I just need to give it a number which is slightly more than 1. And when I run this, you can see the annotation is now outside of the map. Now the final thing I'm going to show you is how to save this map as an image. So I'm going to type fig dot save fig open brackets and then in quotation marks I'm going to write the name of the file I want it to create. So I'm going to just call this test and then dot and then I need the file format, the sort of file I want it to make. So I'm going to make a P and G file, but of course you could make lots of different kinds of files. Then the next thing I'm going to write is DPI, which stands for dots per inch, and this is kind of like the resolution of the image, and I'm going to make that equal to 1000, so I'm just going to make it really, really high. Then when I run this, it's going to create this file for me, which I'll be able to see if I open up my folder here and you can see it's created this file and if I open it this is my map here however you can see that there's a problem with it because the annotation is being cut off the side of the frame in order to fix this I'm going to need to delete this file and then go back to here and I'm going to change this to box underscore inches equals tight. Now this time when I run it, it's going to create another file for me and I'm going to open this. And you can see this time the annotation hasn't been cut off. Okay, so in this video I have shown you how to add annotations to base map and that is everything.